Thanks for downloading the show. Welcome. This is Garden Fork Radio. It's a DIY, eclectic DIY channel that I have. I also have a YouTube channel of the same name with, I just do interesting stuff and I make videos about it and I talk about it. And today, the most interesting person in the world is here, Will Wallace from the Weekend Homestead. How you doing, buddy? I'm here because you called and said, get on Skype. <laughs> yeah, it's time to go. It's a Monday. Here we go. You're like, you're like 10 cans of Red Bull without even drinking any Red Bull. So, I actually haven't even had any caffeine today, which is kind of strange. I'm really trying hard to kick the soda habit, and I've made it so far through the day without having one. That's good. Um, we Our last episode together was 15, 15 things to do when you're stuck at home. And it got such a great response, and we got a bunch of suggestions from you all on our Garden Fork Facebook discussion group or by direct email that we thought we'd do a follow-up show because we both had more ideas as well after the fact, right? It was amazing how many people either reached out through the apps or through social media and just like, even some people were posting their projects like they are like, hey, we took our homework and we did it and here's the pictures of the end result, which was, was pretty cool to see. Yeah, Christy posted on our Garden Fork Facebook group. The link to that is in show notes, but just... If you type in Garden Fork Discussion Group, it should show up in Facebook. But uh, she has a picture of her open refrigerator, which is a pretty big deal for people. Uh, Thanks for the recent podcast on household tasks to accomplish while sheltering in place. I'm descaling the coffee maker and I clean the fridge. My husband started seeds. Cool, huh? That is very cool. That is the nicest, cleanest refrigerator ever, actually. It makes me feel like I need to go clean my refrigerator. Yeah, everything's lined up and stacked, you know. Almost organized by category, even. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and then you got a nice one that you sent to me, right? Yeah. Um, I don't have it on my computer right now, but I'll I pull do. it up here in a minute. Oh, go ahead. Um, from uh, Carrie, I just wanted to say how great the latest, the last podcast you shared from Garden Fork. Not sure what you two did different, but it was great to hear your back and forth. I really like the fact that you didn't drone on like most have about the virus and instead just shared shared some fun, easy ideas. It was like listening to two guys sitting in the garage with beers talking about weekend plans. And I hope you get your squirrel. Hmm. (laughs) I have a squirrel issue that I'm dealing with right now. So, Oh, we have bears. (laughs) I, uh, we had some electrical cords laid out in the yard for some items and I went out the other day to start picking stuff up because the snow's starting to melt and one of the electrical cords my nicest one was chewed all the way through and uh, in two pieces so now instead of a nice 100 foot one I have like a 20 foot and an 80 foot that's an expensive squirrel yes it is Uh, it's very much so but anyway Carrie uh, who follows Will on social media wrote that to Will so we had some special uh, karma the last episode all it right. seems like it. We'll have Let's to see if we can repeat that. it again. All right. So um, what is one of your stay-at-home projects? So somebody had messaged me and said, you know, you guys talked about the house a lot. And one item that you guys didn't touch on is things to do in the car, you know, because you have your cars. And I don't know if you're like me, but we have little kids and it's full of graham crackers and pretzels and food and anything else that ends up in the car. And one of the things that they came back with is they said, maybe talk about some of the things you can do to your car. So that was kind of one of the items I thought we'd kind of cover today as a project you could do in your house. Yeah. I used to work on cars. So. Yeah. I mean, almost, I, I'm, we're not saying, Hey, take your engine out and rebuild it or anything like that, but stuff like, you know, replacing your air filter, you know, maybe replacing your windshield wipers. How about something simple like vacuum out your car? You know, that would be, you know, some simple things that people can do that you, you might not normally have time for that you might be able to do now because of, you know, being at home and looking for things to do. If you don't have a like an indoor, outdoor, wet, dry uh, shop vacuum, maybe your neighbor does and they'll roll it down the driveway and then you can go meet the shop vac and roll it to your house. And um, a deep clean on the car is, is, is a cleansing experience. It really is. I will say the one... The one trick that uh, I learned from uh, a guy was take a uh, 
a, a, a rag and spray some window cleaner on it and actually wipe the inside of your windshield. Everybody washes the outside of their car, but you never realize how much builds up on the inside of your windshield. And yes. it's like all of a sudden you're driving down the road in high definition when that inside of the windshield is clean. I've actually watched a video of how there's actually YouTube channels about detailing your car. And he was like, here's the best way to clean the inside of your windshield. Because I actually am kind of neurotic about that. Because when I drive at night, I can see the glare on the inside of the glass. He uses a microfiber cloth and I think an ammonia-based cleaner, win you know, window cleaner. But the way he contorts himself to get the whole windshield, because you can't get your hand down where the bottom of the windshield meets the dashboard usually. If, sure. I, if I can find this video, I will post a link to it. But if you go, if you just type in car detailing, uh, wash your windshield, uh, clean your windshield, there'll be a couple of very interesting ones there. But th yeah, it's brilliant to clean the inside of your windshield. And the non the microfiber helps eliminate streaking. The uh, one trick or hack that I've seen is if you have one of those like Swiffer dusters for your house or like a feather duster yeah. to put the microfiber cloth on there and tape it to it and then make it kind of like a attachment and you can actually reach further up into your windshield without having to contort your body to get in there. Oh, wow. Well, you just might have invented something there. There you go. The other one, too, is like a lot of people are worried about like, well, what does my car need for parts? Um, a lot of the websites out there, like even Amazon now, you can type in the make and model of your vehicle. And then when you type for, let's say, air filters, it only brings up the air filters that would be compatible with your car. So it's really easy to find, you know, the windshield wiper blades and the air filters and, you know, some of the consumable parts of your car are really easy to find on some of the shopping engines nowadays. Yeah. Um, Costco sell some pretty high-end windshield wipers too and you get what you pay for with windshield wipers and you know if it's pouring down dumping rain at night you want you want to be able to see what's going on and if you cheap out on your windshield wipers well you're you're going to re regret that if you haven't already not to do a, a brand type pitch or something like that but what is your experience with the rain x products we use it on our stuff all the time and i think it's worth its weight to you know put that on your vehicle what are your thoughts on that Oh, I think it's great. I just forget to do it. Now's a perfect time. Yeah. <laughs> so any other uh, car suggestions? That's all I had for cars. You know, it was interesting to have the feedback from people on it on things that I hadn't even thought of, like, you know, the uh, replacing your windshield wipers. I guess, you know, that'd be a great time now that winter's over for most states. Yeah. So um, detailing, cleaning out your car, uh, windshield wipers, Take a look at the cables that are going to your car battery. If there is this white powdery stuff or corrosion, um, you can try and replace them themselves or clean them, but you could also have a shop do that as well. And that will go a long way, especially when it's cold. Uh, uh, Radio Rick, who is a former police officer, has told me many times how he's helping out a, uh, a motorist and he opens the hood and the cables would just kind of come right off the battery because of all that deterioration. So look at that now and save you from being towed home. You know, somebody had a video online. I can't remember who it was about um, possibly getting the haze off of your headlights also. Yeah, I don't know who did that. Who would do that? <laughs> That's a good video, though. I mean, that was that was great. I never thought of doing that before, but it's definitely a lot cheaper than buying new uh, headlights. Yeah, the uh, your plastic headlight lenses now are basically sandblasted as they go down the road and also i think also uv the uv sunlight contributes to fogging those lamps as well and you can buy a kit uh i'll link to one i use one from 3m and you are basically wet sanding the lens down to clear plastic again and it it works really well to the point that uh it's a very popular YouTube video of mine and will help me re-edit it for a Facebook friendly format. And um, it got like 20,000 views when we put it up there. It's amazing. I, I would have never thought that would be a popular thing, but boy, it really took off. So you can order that kit and then clean your, and the kit will last longer than just two headlights. So you could, maybe you could do both your cars. If, well, if you have two cars, that's a two car, two person family. Sure. Uh, I want to move out into the yard, and this is late winter, early spring, which is a perfect time to work on those hard parts of your 
yard that the grass is all beat up? Maybe where you rode your quad through in mud season and tore up all the, all the grass? <laughs> that doesn't happen ever. No, not at all. It's, grass grows better in cool weather anyway. And right now, your, your yard isn't getting a lot of traffic, but it is getting quite a bit of moisture. So lay, rough up the soil with a metal rake. Lay down grass seed. Don't bury grass seed. Does not, grass seed needs to be on top of the soil to sprout, but it needs to be in contact with the soil. So you spread it out, you know, you, like you're kind of like pretending you're feeding the chickens. Instead, you're putting a grass seed and walk over it with your shoes. So it, you're, you're pressing the seed into the top of the soil and then cover it with straw or they have that um, kind of mulched up straw that doesn't germinate and water. If it dries out, water it and uh, your grass will grow. One tip on that that I learned from somebody is do not use fertilizer on top of it. Usually if you fertilize on top of grass seed, it actually can inhibit it from growing or potentially even kill it because the grass has to start to establish itself before it's strong enough to take fertilizer. Yeah, the nitrogen is just too high. Yep. Wow. There you go. Uh, another one I saw, actually, uh, a friend of mine posted on Facebook, but he finally cleaned his stove. Like in his in his house? Yeah. You know, if you're talking about outside stuff, how about cleaning your gas grill? I mean, it's fairly simple to take apart, you know, get the garden hose out and a little bit of like an SOS pad or some kind of steel wool pad and, you know, go to cleaning out the inside of it and it'll make your burners last a lot longer. It'll make your grill last a lot longer. And if you're going to be at home cooking out, especially since the weather's getting nice, is always kind of a fun thing to do. Exactly. Also, spiders like to lay eggs and build webs inside the tube the burner tubes and clog up the jets of your gas grill and if you get out your pancake air compressor because i keep talking about that um, or your canned air i like the pancake compressor wear some eye protection and ear protection because those compressors are loud and you're going to blow junk in your eyes but if you blast it all out your gas grill will work so much better and it will last longer too Getting that material out from the inside that holds the moisture against the metal is really what causes all the rust to start accumulating on the inside of your grill. That, and if you do a good job cleaning your grates, you know, taking them out, flipping them over, cleaning them off really well, those small particles that build up on there don't end up in your food. Yeah. that You're scraping the seasoning off the grate. <laughs> yep. Hey, it's, you know what? It, there is a, a place to have a little of that inside of your gas grill, but at the same point, Sometimes it gets a little bit overboard, and that's when you run into problems. Hey, would you like more of Garden Fork or more of Eric? Would you like to get it in your email inbox? I send out, just about every week, I send out a little email about Eric's world and new stuff I posted. I even talk about podcasts I've listened to or just interesting stuff. And usually, almost always, at least one picture of the Labradors, Henry and Charlie. You can get that by signing up for Eric's Garden Fork email newsletter thing. There should be a link in the notes to this show. Just scroll down to the description of the podcast in your app, and I hope it's a clickable link. It should be. Or go to gardenfork.tv, and on almost every page at the top of the page should be a sign up. If you're on a mobile device, you might have to tap on the little, there's a little menu bar and then hopefully there will be a sign up or scroll the bottom of a post and you can sign up there. Should be a link in the app here. More of Eric. It would be fun to have you along for the ride. It's kind of more brain dump Eric. Cool stuff. All right. We were... Um, talking about things to do in the kitchen and someone suggested on Facebook in addition to the things we suggested was to scrub out your microwave oven like the the ceiling of it yeah the whole you, if you look at that thing close it's um it's like a petri dish you know <laughs> i was actually embarrassed to say that uh the up uh, you know i clean out the the the, the turntable and you know the stuff that you can see and then one time I kind of looked up in the microwave because ours is fairly low and looked and there was all sorts of stuff stuck to it I'm like oh how long has that been there so yeah. it happens <laughs> it's melted onto the microwave yep 
75 things of mac and cheese in the microwave that have exploded actually now have stalactites hanging from the uh, top of the roof. One thing I actually just did was I moved the couch away from the wall and I vacuumed behind it. Did you find any change in the uh, couch cushions? Yes. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. I invite all of my uh, friends over and have them sit on the couch. And then when they leave, I lift up the cushions <laughs> and see what kind of donations we got. I found like eight quarters and I'm like, how does this work? That's nice. That's like uh, four games of Pac-Man right there. I also vacuum the couch if you have a uh, a cloth couch. Some vacuums actually have a small uh, upholstery brush, but you can just take the the dust nozzle. Usually has a little brush thing that you can go onto it and just sweep it back and forth, and you'd you'll be blown away at how much dirt you get off a a couch. <laughs> When, when we used to have dogs, um, one of the things tricks we do is the lint roller that you'd normally use on your pants or your sweater or something like that, yep. using that to take the dog hair off of the cushions if you have a cloth cushion really makes a huge difference too. Yeah, I actually, we have some throw pillows on the couch and I wash them because you're, you're falling asleep on them. You're, you know, the oil from your hair is getting on there and... People just forget that. I mean, they change the sheets on their bed, but they don't change the sheet that's essentially wrapping around your couch pillow. And I also wash the pillow, the stuffing part as well. I'm, this is more information than you need to know. But <laughs> Okay, well, if we're going down this rabbit hole, let me ask this. How do you dry them to make sure that they end up drying out completely? Do you just hang them outside or put them in the dryer or what do you do? I hang them in the basement near the furnace. Nice. I stretch them because they're cotton usually. I stretch them. If you put them in the dryer, they shrink and get all wrinkly. Gotcha. You want to talk about the garage a little bit? Yes. So one item that somebody had sent me was, you know how you like you do a project, and I am guilty of this. I don't know if you are, but I am, which is you get done with the project, and then all the miscellaneous screws and parts just kind of get thrown in a bin, and all that kind of small stuff keeps piling up. And my wife calls it the project graveyard, where you yes. know all the stuff that didn't get used in the project goes to pile up. And we're actually spending some time going through that stuff and getting little bins to organize it or, you know, peanut butter jars and so on and just kind of organizing that stuff in the garage because I always say I'm going to get to it someday, but I always am too busy. Well, now I have time on my hands, so we're kind of getting back to that stuff. So that could be something that people can work on. I have some old metal hubcaps that are kind of small, but they're from one of my pickup trucks and they make great parts holders when you're working on a project and at the end of the project, there's some leftover screws and washers and stuff. And they end up cluttering up my workbench in the garage. And I should go do that. I should just reorganize all that stuff and put the, all the lock washers in one place and all the nuts and the bolts in one place. And that would save me time going forward when I, and I have a lot of time in my hands right now. A little hack to on those, uh, somebody showed me was take a magnet, you know, like a refrigerator magnet, one of the little bit bigger size ones, and stick it in the bottom of that. So when it, the hubcap is upside down, you're throwing the stuff in there. Anything that's small kind of works its way to that magnet, and then it doesn't slosh around in the bin, and it kind of makes the whole bowl almost a magnetic bowl to keep all your parts in. Excellent. Excellent. There's uh, the price of admission, folks. <laughs> you had a suggestion of bike maintenance. Yes. So, you know, it's starting to get nice outside and, you know, you can uh, go for bike rides and things like that. I, I think that, like, give you an example, the state of Wisconsin said it's okay to go for walks and go for bike rides. But nobody really, they usually dig out their bikes and just get on them and start riding. But before you go out, maybe do a little bit of maintenance on it, you know, fill up the tires, grease some of the parts, you know, check things to make sure, you know, they're, they're just no, nothing broken, you know, do that on your bikes and on the kids' bikes. And then it can be a fun thing to do as a family together, you know, and go for a bike ride. Yeah, because that, you know, the minute the kids want to go out and they discover that there's a flat tire or something, it's like just kind of pours cold water on the project. Well, that and even maintenance on a bike. I mean, if you feel uncomfortable about doing DIY projects or, you know, turning a wrench on some equipment and things like that, starting with a bicycle is actually probably one of the easiest things to maintain because you really can't do anything wrong to it. It's you, you only can make it better. It's very difficult to make it, you know, worse. Yeah, and a little chain lube goes a long way. Just make sure um, it's not splattering all over your kids' pants. But do, I guess kids don't wear pants on bikes, probably. Yeah, mine do. They'll wear jeans every once in a while. But it's, it is important to go and, and, you know, just tighten all that stuff up. That and it's a safety thing. And I'll be honest, we do it as a, actually a family. You know, my son always wants to 
work on little projects and things like that. And that's kind of one of those ones where you can kind of get do it together and get them into the idea of maintaining their stuff and kind of show them a little responsibility towards their stuff. And then, you know, hopefully that'll, you know, pay off in the long run. You hope. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, I had a couple of ideas with computers. Let's hear it. One is to clean your keyboard, which is kind yeah. of like the microwave oven of the computer. Do you ever use canned air on there and all of a sudden like stuff is flying out of the keys? I'm like, I don't remember having Chinese food. When did I have Chinese? Oh, that was yeah. about a month and a half ago. And there's like a little pieces of rice or food coming out of the keyboard. I'm guilty of it. I'll say I am. I use a vacuum and the, I use the dust nozzle, which is the smallest gizmo that the vacuum has. And I run it across the keys and try and get into the corners as much as I can. I'm reluctant to blow into the keyboard. So I like the idea of sucking stuff out of the keyboard. And then most, I go ahead. I was going to say most keyboards nowadays are actually sealed compartment keyboards. So back in the old days when there used to be spaces around the keys, you'd have a scenario where you didn't want to do that. We're blowing into it. But if you have something that's within the last probably five years, most of those are sealed because most of the manufacturers are trying to make sure that you don't get moisture in your keyboards. So if you have older stuff, vacuuming it out is best. If you have newer stuff using the canned air or the vacuum, either one of them will work. Or your pancake air compressor. You and the air compressor. Here we go. <laughs> you can also, I also take Windex on a kitchen towel and I clean the keys. And it's amazing how uh, your keys actually were a different color a while ago. <laughs> I will say warning on that. Do not use something that is very harsh because I made that mistake. And I have a keyboard that is missing a number of the letters on the keyboard. So you definitely have to remember where your keys are at that point. I mean, Windex works. Simple green, I think will work. Definitely. Do not use acetone. I'm just saying. And then inside the computer, uh, maybe you could go through and catalog all those photos that you dumped on there from your phone. Isn't it amazing how many photos and how much video you collect on your computer from your phone? I looked at it and we have, I mean, we do a lot because we do blogging and things. I have 5,000 photos from the last year on my phone. Yeah. Yeah, I should probably outsource that. <laughs> I don't know why I have like 17 photos of pancakes, you know, just from like one meal. Like I was trying to get the perfect shot of the pancake. So it took 17 different versions. I kept one of them and I never deleted the other 16. <laughs> so um, that is my uh, additional list. Yeah, that's that's that covered a lot. I mean, there was a lot of good feedback back and forth. And I'm really happy to see that, you know, people are looking at the list and going at it and and doing some things to better themselves. I mean, a couple of people even made comments about the online courses that they're taking or, hey, I'm gonna try learning a language or I'm gonna do these types of things to even better themselves. It doesn't necessarily always have to be a DIY project or fixing something on your house or cooking in your kitchen. Sometimes you can do something for yourself. And if you do wanna do the gardening thing, um, our friend Aaron from the YouTube channel, The Impatient Gardener, so type that in the impatient gardener has a brand new video about um, starting your spring garden. It was awesome. I mean, it really covered a lot of the questions that I've had about what I should do with my garden. So it's great. She knows all the names of the plants. That is very impressive. Like she's like, oh, this is the genus. Such or such. And I'm like, uh, I see that as the red flower. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, that's a brown eyed sees Susan. She goes, no, that's a rude Becky or her to blah, 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 you know? Yeah, and I'm even one further back now. It's the green plant that grows in my yard. Yeah. Our neighbor gave us some dahlia tubers last year, and we plant. I just threw them in. I'm like, oh, okay, you know. And they're phenomenal, and they're really easy to grow. You have to dig them. If you're in the uh, – I'm just looking outside, and there's a snowstorm. Uh, but you have to dig them up in the fall if you live in an area that gets a freeze, but it's pretty easy to do. And man, are they beautiful. So uh, my neighbor's going to give us some more, but I think we're going to order some as well. Aaron gave me a link to a good company uh, to order them from. So I'm, am I'm amazed at how many online companies there are that you can order seeds and plants from these days. You know, it always used to be, oh, I'm going to go to the home improvement store down the road or the big box guys and get some stuff there. And there are tons of places where they can deliver it right to you. So you could go online right now pick a couple things and because FedEx and UPS and all the different shipping companies and the mail is still going, you can have things to help your projects out, get delivered to your house and away you go. 
Yeah, I love it. Um, High Mowing Seeds is a pretty cool company that I just discovered from my neighbor who runs a, a mar farm market stand. He has a farm, and then on the corner of the property by the road, he has a honor system, you know, uh, shed. And the garlic that I bought from him was phenomenal. And um, it's actually his partner uh, who is in charge of the garden, and it's a certified organic garden. So I have to actually give her the credit, not him. But gotcha. I, they um they're great people and they have but they lo really like high mowing seeds so I ordered some stuff from there so you know some people have been asking me about the apple orchard and when to plant trees and and kind of do that because that's one of the things that we did a couple of years ago and it's been going really well and surprisingly enough those trees were actually a, a number of them were ordered from um I think it's called Stark Brothers and you'll just get this long cardboard box and inside of it will be these basically a stick. And uh, it's got a root ball on it that's got some jelly on it or something like that to keep the moisture on it. And you can plant them and away you go, you know, and it, it, was, it was pretty amazing. By the way, this isn't a uh, paid sponsorship from those guys, but that is where we got our, a lot of our trees from. Okay. So, um, uh, brain, not oh, brain not working. We're about to talk about meditation and my brain stops working. Um, <laughs> I'm a big fan of Headspace. I think it has really helped uh, with my depression, but Will had something to say about this. So I got an email today from Headspace because we had tried it out for a little while. And because of everything going on, Headspace has actually got a new offer, which by the way, they're not a sponsor or anything like that. I got to preface it with that. But they're offering a number of their paid, um, what do you want to call it, courses or uh, items to listen to free. So for not only just the next 30 days, but for a period of time, Headspace is offering a number of their pieces uh, that normally be paid for free, which is if you wanted to give it a try, it's a good time to give it a try. They have um, a free course. I know it's a 10 day course where they they cut. It's like your average person's approach to meditation. And that's really what hooked me was they made it OK to it just seemed like I could never calm my mind. And they're like, yeah, it's it's never going to be calm. <laughs> um, there's just the, the goal is to achieve some calm moments. So and there's like a 10 day free trial and they have some great introductory classes. And then you can opt to buy into the app and that unlocks other courses that are like from 10 to 30 days. A lot of them have either a woman's voice or a man's voice. It's either Andy or this, I don't know who the woman is, but she is a really, it's either Australian or British woman. It's very, just very easy to listen to. And it's, 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 I think it's saved me from uh, being more of a whack than I am. But during tough times like this, they, they have one about anxiety. They have one about there must be 30 of them. They all have a very similar theme, but they're kind of a, if you're having a problem with, with some work stress, they have one about that. And so anyway, I'm kind of rambling, but it's headspace.com and all the information will be there. And it work. It really works. I, well, at least it works for me. So it, it's, it's a great program. I mean, their whole goal of the advertising campaign that they're saying is, you know, a lot of people have a lot of anxiety right now. And even taking 15 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day, and really getting your head to kind of just relax a little bit coming into it will make these types of times a lot easier to deal with, especially around your family when everybody's in the close quarters and things like that. And normally if you're a person who works from home and nobody's ever around and now all of a sudden everybody's around, you know, it's a way to help, you know, all of that. All right, everyone. So let us know. We could do a third show of this if you want. Uh, it's radio at gardenfork.tv or you can reach out to Will and I uh, on the Garden Fork Facebook group and Rick from the podcast and Aaron from the podcast are also active in the Facebook group as well if you have any specific questions. Anything else, my friend? I think that's good for today. All right, go out or, or stay in and do cool stuff and then let us know. Radio at GardenFork.tv. Thank you. Garden Fork Radio's executive producer is Jimmy Goots. You can find more information about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes at hollowbooks.com. Our theme music is used under license from uniquetracks.com. Other music used in the show is used under license from audioblocks.com. Thank you.